All right, we'll go ahead and start our Q&A. Remember that I need to leave by 2, or I need to finish the message by 2. So uh, anybody who asks questions, be sure to raise your hand. That way we'll get to all of those. And of course, if we have time, we'll get to everybody else as well. Uh, Oscar, oh, I need to let you unmute yourself. Okay, Oscar, go ahead. All right, thank you, Dota. Uh, great, great lesson as always on Galatians. I had a question on Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. It says, uh, For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only you, not liberty, for an occasion to the flesh. Does it make any difference if it says for an occasion of the flesh? Or does that to the flesh, uh, of the flesh, mean the same thing? I'm just kind of get thinking with words because... Well, and I'll tell you, for me, I'm not too good at differences and definitions of prepositions. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah, an occasion. Uh, so he says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And you're asking, is it of the, why, why say to and not of? Of that being different. So what, I don't think it would make any difference if it said of the flesh. But just making sure that why it didn't put of, um, meaning to the flesh, meaning is it directly to it or of the flesh? Because it's like to the flesh is more of a direct point. And of the flesh, I mean, I mean, it's basically the same thing, but I didn't know if there was some insight you may have heard before in the past teachings where uh, if, if it was trying to, to make it sound like it was different, but it really isn't. So I'm just it's just a question I had when I was reading this. Why didn't it say of the flesh instead of to the flesh? Well, but I would I say to the flesh means that's the flesh doing this. So if I... Um, it's like I'm giving over my liberty to the flesh to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And then once I'm given over to that yoke of bondage under the flesh, then that would be of the flesh. So okay. that, that's yeah. how yeah. I would see it. It's like, it's like that initial part there where you choose your liberty to use your liberty to give it to the flesh. And then once it's to the flesh, then it's of the flesh. That's oh, how it's something uh, afterwards, an afterthought. After, after, once it's passed, it's of the flesh. Yes, that's that's how oh. I would see it. Yeah, okay. it's almost like a, you know you're given liberty, so it's like um, you know like when I got my degree from the college, it was it was when I first got it, it was the degree to Eric, given by the university to Eric, and now that it's to Eric, now it's of Eric, it's mine. That's how I would think of it. So it's like here I got my liberty. What am I going to do? Am I going to operate in Christ or am I going to go to the yoke of bondage? If I go to the yoke of bondage, then I've given my liberty to the flesh. And once the flesh has it, now that liberty is it's of the flesh. Now it's going to uh, the flesh. Uh, well, okay, then that, that can see why. Now, now, see, that was what I was trying to lead to, was there is a difference between two and not. Uh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Now, because if it's said of the flesh, then it's through the flesh is, is present right now. But of the flesh can mean that was done several several years ago. So uh, another comment I had. Uh, but before you go to that, let me just show you another verse that might help with that. Uh, when okay. it comes to the image of the beast, uh, you okay. know, in the book of Revelation, Revelation uh, uh, thirteen, you'll see that difference—the two and the of. Okay. Uh, is that where it is? Yes, okay, so verse 14, Revelation 13, 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So they make an image, the world makes an image, and that image is given to the beast. And right. then once he receives it, verse 15... It says he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So first the image is to the beast, and then once the beast has it, now the image is of the beast. And that's a perfect, oh man, that's great understanding. Thank you. That, that just, that just, now I'm going to see that throughout the word when I'm reading it, and I'll understand it when I see another example of that, that I'm going to write that down in there, because there's probably other references that deal with that. To and of, that I was, was 
I had an occasion. I didn't personally have one, but uh, real quick, like um, a young man uh, who I went to church several times with saw me at a local store, and he came up to me and says, "Well, I haven't seen you in church lately. Why are you, why are you not showing up to church?" And I'm like, and I said. And I told myself, well, if you're really loving me, and I didn't say this to him, but I said, if you're really loving me, you would ask, hey, how's your family? And how are things going with you, personally? Right. So he was using occasion to the flesh to put legalism on me because I didn't, I, can, uh, I haven't been church lately. And, and so then I can see that as a way of, uh, they're, used, they're only used not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And that's what he was doing, was saying, I haven't been to church lately. So now it's like, but if you're loving me, you're not going to put that legalism on me. By saying that, you're going to say, hey, how have you been? How are things going for you and your family? That's the love that we would, that we would have for each other instead of at using legalism for each other. And I just see that, uh, how that uh, could be. Uh, because that uh, kind of ruined... Uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, it's kind of ruined the un- unite, un- unity that we have in Christ. It's like someone trying to use the of the flesh to create a vision. So, just wanted to make that comment, but uh, I had that happen to me. And now I understand the two is more like a present and of is something that's already either will take place or has taken place. Right, yeah, two is initially. It is, I'm going to use my liberty to allow the flesh to control me. And now that it does, then it's of the flesh. Yeah. Uh, that's a great understanding. I like that. Because I, mean, I know I'm going to find other verses when I begin doing my study about that. I'm going to go to concordance two and up now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot of references to go through if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would be good. That would be a good study. Thank you, brother. That's all I have. All right, thanks, Oscar. Appreciate it. Doris, did you have a question or comment? Yes, I did. You mentioned people being bewitched by legalism. My question is, the pastor that's teaching this legalism, will they be held responsible for teaching the members legalism? Because I find that it's hard to um, try to show them the word right and divided. They're stuck, but they seem like they're under a spell. I, even, I mean, people in my family, in my household. Right. Um, because the, they're believing what the pastor say, and they're not willing to listen to what anybody else say. Yes, okay. Um, if, the, if the pastor, there may be pastors who haven't trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin. So then they're not really saved and they're going to hell. Those pastors are, will get a greater uh, fire or greater torture, greater torment in hell than ones than people that didn't do that. So if I'm just an ordinary person and I never believed the gospel, and so then I go to hell, but someone else is a pastor who didn't believe the gospel and he's teaching this legalism to others, then he's the one getting leading other people astray basically and so then he's going to have a greater punishment in hell for that so if it's an unsafe pastor then that's the case yes there will be a greater punishment but if we're saved you will will be up will be at the judgment seat of christ first corinthians 3 so then if they put people under legalism then they're judged by their works and we find out well that's wood hay or stubble so then they, their work is burned up. So they think they're going to get a great reward because they've been a pastor for all these years and everything. But really they led people astray with legalism. And so their work is burned up. But they themselves are saved because they've trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin. So basically the answer is if you've got a pastor teaching legalism, then they are accountable for it. If they end up in hell because they never believed the gospel, they'll get a greater punishment. If they end up in heaven because they did believe the gospel, they'll have uh, they'll lose their reward or have a lesser reward. So either way, they're held accountable. Thank you. All right, thank you, Doris. Yeah, a lot of people in that situation, unfortunately. And yeah, it's it's they're bewitched. I mean, I've heard 
I heard a guy preach a gospel that was good, and then he starts adding in, make Jesus the Lord of your life and things, and I confronted him, and he said, but that's what I preached. I preached Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for my sin, or your sin. They, they were bewitched. They didn't understand. They were adding legalism to it. So uh, there's a lot of people like that, but you know, if they believe the gospel, they're still going to be saved. They just won't get that reward for the preaching because it's a false gospel. And we'll get into that next week because Galatians 1, 6, he talks about that. Uh, preaching another gospel in verses 8 and 9 about let him be a curse. So uh, we'll get into more of that next time. So, uh, Richard, did you have a question or comment? Well, yeah, you know, you're, you're so right about sanctification. I mean, that is so important. Being saved from hell is, is you know, the best gift anybody could have. I mean, you know, but... But it's a lot more to this walk than just being saved from hell. You know, we, you know, the sanctification process helps you with your rewards in heaven, your glorified body, and it helps you while you're here on earth trying to deal with this present evil world. You know, if all you did is get saved and you just stop there, you got a lot of trouble in this present evil world that you don't have any help in. You don't have the armor of God. You know, you, 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 your sanctification is lacking, so you just aren't growing in, in a spiritually. Anyhow, that's my comment. But thank you, Eric. That was very good. I enjoyed that. I guess I hit that right on the point, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Yeah, it's sort of like if you were an orphan, you didn't have, uh, you didn't have any parents, and yet someone adopted you who was super rich. I mean, that's a wonderful thing that now you're not in the foster home or you're not in the orphanage, but you've got a super rich parent. But uh, if all you do is now you're adopted, but they don't do anything for you, it doesn't really, you know, the, the, great, the great part of that by being adopted by the super rich parents is now that you get all the blessings of that, get to live in the fancy house, get all the, you know, good education, good health care, and uh, all the possessions, you know, all this stuff that goes along with it. And so you can think of that in terms of your salvation. You're saved from hell. Wonderful thing. You've been adopted by God as your father. But if you don't take advantage of the benefits of being adopted, getting sanctified, getting the sound doctrine in you, having God's love come through you, bringing glory to God, it's like getting adopted by a super rich family but not living in the house with them, not enjoying all those things. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's right. The sanctification is largely missed by Christianity because they, they think they're still focused on getting saved. But yet when you recognize your eternal security, then the knowledge of the truth and that becomes a sanctification thing is very important. So, Yeah, you're given this great gift of the grace of God. And it's just like you just flush it down the toilet. You know, you're not, you know, you're not growing in God's grace. You're not, you know, you're, you're just stuck in park. And, uh, yeah, it, and, and plus, you know, God desires you to read his word and grow. That's his desire. You're, you know, God desires for your spiritual growth, you know. And so, <clears throat> yeah, well, thank you, though, Eric. Yeah, thank you. All right. Connie, do you have a question or comment? I came in late, but it was good what you had to say. I, I came into the part about being little children and um, uh, knowing uh, good and evil. And, and that's the way I felt when I was uh, going to Catholic uh, school. Um, I accepted Jesus Christ at that age, but not understanding it until later on. But I did not want to go to hell because my um, nun told me that if, uh, you know, about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. She talked about that. And uh, I didn't want to go to hell. So I believed in God for that reason and no other reason. And I really didn't uh, understand uh, the, the fact that I was evil until later on when I was old, you know, older. But I lived... Um, thinking uh, after I did receive, uh, you know, uh, uh, believed in Jesus, then I had a priest tell me I was going to go to hell because I uh, missed Mass 
And I lied, like I told you all before, I lied about that too when I went to confession. So I knew I was a double whammy on me. And so, um, and I was always so searching, always, and I always wanted to know God, wanted to know Him better. And it's so sad that you have religion that takes you away from who God truly is. And it's so sad because I would like have nightmares sometimes wondering about hell, you know, and I didn't want to go. And then the other thing uh, the nun told us is uh, she told about the resurrection too. And she says, whatever you do, when you hear your name being called, you make sure you leave everything. Don't worry about your parents. Don't worry about no one. Just go. That's God calling you, you know. I mean, and that was real big in, you know, as, as a child. I wasn't even a teenager. I was only like about nine or ten years old. And I'll never forget that. And that's what kept me wanting to believe God and wanting to know more and more about Him. So I don't think in the beginning, you, as a child, you worry about the fact that you're a sinner. You just want to go to the right place and you want to know God. Right. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing. I know when I do the kids' study, that's the thing I try to say about every time is, you know, recognize that you've done some bad things and that Jesus died to pay for those. And if you don't believe that, then you end up in hell. I mean, I don't really go into... Go ahead, Connie. Um, one more thing, too. My brother-in-law was here today, and um, I want to extend this to Larry Tidwell. Larry, I just want to tell you my brother-in-law just loves you. He's got your music, and he was sharing uh, your music of the one with the anchor, and he's so upset because he can't see the video anymore because he loves music and Christian music, so he just thinks you are awesome. So just to give you the compliment. Tell him to tell my wife that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Tell him I appreciate it. I and think he's, was, got, he's called you up. You've talked to him. His name is J.R.? Oh, yes. I have talked to him. Wow. Yeah. I mean, oh, he thinks you're awesome. <laughs> well, I think he is as well. And tell him that that's what the CD is about for him and for others mm -hmm. and for the gospel. Yeah. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Larry, did you have anything else while, while we got you going here? Uh, now, I will uh, say, Eric, that you're, the way you're doing that now, the way you're laying that out is just so good. I mean, it, it just makes things come together. And, and those passages that you're bringing up and pointing back to and, and the way you've got there on the board. Now, I can't read none of that, but it sure looks good. <laughs> <laughs> looks like I know what I'm talking no, it, about. <laughs> you know, it's, it is honestly, it's fantastic. And, and I want to, everybody to know, I pray for everybody in our group every night. And I just appreciate all of you. And uh, so anyhow, thanks, Eric. It was just wonderful. I, I enjoyed it. Thanks, and Mary Eric. did as well. Mary, Mary listens as well. Yeah, Thank I know you. she's she's there with you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate that. James, James, do you have a question or comment? Uh, no question. Uh, just just glad to have finally a little time to be here today. I'm working six days a week, so time is pretty limited. Uh, but yeah. no, good looks. So just glad to be here. No, oh, we're glad to have you. Now I can understand work sometimes. Gets in the way, so um, I'm glad you could join us today. Thanks, James. All right, thanks. Uh, David Dejan, David, do you have a question or comment? David, if you are there, right there by your phone, it looks like you got your iPhone. Okay, oh, okay there you go. Eric, I'm about to My wife got me painting the bedroom today, so ah. I've been listening. The uh, the, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me get my speaker on one second. Uh, uh, speaker, come on. Okay, yeah. Eric? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, David. Oh, all right. Hey, man. Good lesson. God bless you. You know, I love the book of Galatians, man. I could just 
Oh man, I could just listen to it 24 hours a day. You know, Galatians is such a, an important book to the body of Christ, but rightly dividers in particular is such a is such a great book for us to know, learn, and to understand. I was just talking with someone this morning about the Pentecostal church and the bondage that they started and and, and it, it's, it's, it's not as bad as it used to be but the bondage that they had put people under and they're still feeling the effects of it even today they couldn't go to movies they couldn't watch a basketball game they couldn't couldn't go to the show they couldn't wear pants they couldn't, all these things they couldn't wear jewelry they couldn't wear lipstick they couldn't i mean all these things because of not understanding God's word and misinterpreting God's word and put hundreds of thousands of people in religious bondage. And, uh, and so, it, you know, listening to the lesson today, it brought that, I just had a conversation this morning about that, it brought that back up, how much bondage these denominations had put people under and, and and hopefully by lessons and teachings like you're doing and the other uh, rightly dividing teachers are presenting uh, the walls of some of this uh, uh, indoctrinated bondage can be broken down and we can, we can walk in the joy and the love of Christ. Like the Bible says, you have received Christ. So walk ye in him. And so uh, uh, I just want to thank you, man. Just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stop telling you how much I appreciate you, uh, Eric, and, and all the right divine ministers. But, man, this is just such a good lesson. And, uh, uh, you know, and I just thank God for you and for what you're doing. That, and then I'm going to shut up. Let me give this one scripture. That scripture you use. First uh, Timothy two and four. Ninety eight percent, if not ninety nine percent, of Christian dom don't understand that they. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know because I've talked with so many people, and 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 uh, I tell them yes, okay, you're saved. But after you're saved, listen, there's another part to it. And you see this and right here, and come into the knowledge of the truth that's the part you're missing you got to grow in that and and so many have told me well you know like you know i can't people say well you really into that stuff huh and like uh they'll tell me uh you know i don't want to get that that serious about it you know i mean come on now you've been talking a whole hour and a half and that's just too serious i don't want to get that involved i just want to die you know i want to go to heaven I don't want to get that involved. Do I have to get that involved? I'm just telling you you have to grow in the Word. Eric, thank you. God bless you. Enjoy the, the teaching. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, and, um, and, and, and just keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. Thanks, David. Yeah, I appreciate that. I grew up in one of those churches that you mentioned, a Pentecostal church, and they had all those rules like you talked about. I mean, they you couldn't... Uh, you couldn't wear shorts in a uh, situation with members of the opposite sex around. You couldn't uh, go to a bowling alley or go to a baseball game. You know, they had uh, just all, you couldn't go to a movie theater. My, my grandfather actually, uh, when he retired, became an extra, and he was an extra in several different movies uh, he's appeared in, but he never got to watch them because you couldn't go to a movie theater. Uh, he couldn't watch them his own self on the big screen. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just great bondage that they put people under, and and it really, the sad part is, <coughs> it just uh, ruins the lives of so many people. The man that to just recently started going to John Verstegen's church and rightly dividing the word of truth, he was in that same church. I mean, what by him following the teachings of that church, his marriage was dissolved, and his uh, son died from a a disease that could have been prevented if they had taken him to the doctor, but the pastor told him not to do so. And he's been living with the torment and, you know, agony of, of thinking, and I mean it is, it's still 
many years later really affecting his life because he feels like, you know, I should have taken my son to the doctor. You know, hindsight's 20, 20. and But he was in that legalistic system that told him, no, you'd be interfering with God. God couldn't work and God couldn't heal him if you took him to a doctor. And so, yeah, I mean, I know firsthand my own mind going through that and just seeing others. And it's just, you're right, it's just so much bondage that the, that the Pentecostal church has put people under when uh, we are free in Christ. So, uh, yeah, it's really sad to see. But, yeah, the great thing is we still have this system. And even though evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, the Godhead can still work in you through His Word. And uh, th that's the wonderful thing. So if you diligently seek God, you can get out of that system. He did. I did. My uncle did. I mean, there are people who got out of it. And certainly there's a lot of damage. And trying to get over that takes you know, a long time, especially the degree to which he was in. But... Uh, but it's something that God can do. God can heal those minds. And so we just have to get into God's word, believe what it says, rightly divide it, and allow, that, allow our minds to be transformed uh, by that doctrine. So, Thank you, David. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, Lenny and Lisa. Lenny and Lisa, do you have a question or comment? Hey, Eric, thank you for the lesson. We don't have any questions today, but thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, looking forward okay. to uh, hearing Ernie teach on uh, next Saturday. That'd be good. Yes, indeed. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fernando and Lacey, do you have a question or comment? No, that was a good study. Thank you very much, Eric. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, Liz, Liz and Ernie, if you're there, uh, do you have a question or comment? Anything? No, no questions or comments today. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Liz. All right. Let me, uh, let's see. I think, I think I've covered everybody except Jerry. Uh, does anybody have anything else? Before we go to Jerry, I said I could only state it too, but we still got quite a bit of time if anybody else has any questions or anything. Okay, Jerry, you want to wrap it up for us? Oh, you're muted, Jerry. How's that? Yeah, now we can hear you. I, yeah. I, would, love, I, I would love to say I enjoyed it and uh, the Q&A and the teaching. But I got here a little late from Connie's. It was about 12 o'clock, I think, I joined. And then it was one telephone call at the other that I had to take. Ah. And I just walked in like five minutes ago. <laughs> I had, had it on all this time. So all right. I'll have to regroup and catch it on YouTube, Eric. But all right, yeah. Missed the whole. No, Thank I, you. I understand. It's good you got the fellowship with Connie in there and uh, have your study there. Yeah. And, uh, and then just and my, my daughter called me, and I had to stay on the phone with her a good while. Oh, I understand but you. Yeah. Appreciate. Yeah, appreciate thanks, Jerry. Thanks. thanks, Jerry. Yeah, you got things happen in life, so I understand that. Okay, man. All right. Well, I guess if that's it, then uh, we'll go ahead and say goodbye to everybody, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at our uh, study. What are we doing on Mondays? Bible overview. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're in Saul and David, aren't we? Yeah. It's hard for me to remember what I'm doing on what days. <laughs> All right, we'll be in, uh, we'll be in the Kings uh, tomorrow night. So have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Eric. Bye, everybody.